Hey YouTube, it's your son Texas Picker here, coming at you with an update with the Texian campaign plate that I found a few weeks ago. Found out a little bit of information, value wise, no luck. But so, if you checked out my last video, you know that I tried to get a, a little bit of footage from the estate sales. Don't worry, I will be bringing more footage like that. Um, for right now, they might actually be just quick four to five minute videos of each one that I go to throughout the day because I don't have a way to um, complete compiled them together i think that's the way you say somebody correct me for more but yeah i don't have a way to put them together yet so until then um i'll be working on that um and then at the end of the or towards a after i get all this information out i will be showing the stuff that i sourced today because even though it was raining where i'm at there's still ways to source there's still ways to make money so if you're new to reselling or you want to get into it for whatever reason part-time full-time um, I like to be able to dish out what little tips and tricks that others have shown me on YouTube as well as some of the stuff that I've learned personally. So um, I like to be able to help others. So that'd be great, right? All right. So get started on the plate itself. If you look at the back, there are the initials. Uh, made it really easy to identify the JB stands for James Beach. That gentleman was born in 1822 out of Tunstall, England. And he died in 1887. Improve is uh, he was the sole proprietor of a place called the Lion Works in that Tunstall from 1834 to 1844. Uh, the reason that's that's important is because the Texas Revolution War was going on around that time, and the uh, Mexican American War didn't start until after 1845 when Texas became part of the United States. Very important because some people were trying to say that the plate represents the Mexican American War and. Uh, recent research uh, has shown that it actually has to do with the Texas Revolution War. So that gives it that gives it a little bit of a daytime too. So while he was a sole proprietor um, of that place, um, people might know the name Beach uh, because after 1844, between those years, he and his family ended up moving a few towns over and the neighbor that he ended up moving next to was a gentleman by the name of, I, didn't, I don't remember his full name, but his last name was Hancock. And in 1851, they formed the Beach and Hancock Company. That went on into 1876. Um, there's a little bit more history with that company actually, but back around to the actual plate itself, which I'll show again, because it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool, I mean, right? So what we get into the date is when the uh, Texas Revolution War was going on, um, they say the first battle took place in Gonzales, Texas at around 1835. And then there was a, a number of small battles that happened um, up until what well, built into uh, the Alamo. So, you know, people, of, of course, a lot of people know, remember the Alamo. Um, some some know exactly where it comes from. A lot of people may not. But where it actually comes from is what they yelled out six weeks after the Alamo fell. Uh, it's what they yelled out. Remember the Alamo before they attacked Santa Ana's army and uh, ultimately won the independence for Texas, which I mean, if if you're into history or if you want to know more about Texas history, it's really neat stuff, um, which again, the war was the war was big enough for, I mean, to catch their eyes over there in England. I mean, they knew about it. So it doesn't surprise me. I mean, uh, Mexico was under Spain's reign until I think 1820, 1821, somewhere in that area. So, and uh, for those that don't know what the odds were against for people fighting in the Alamo, it was uh, 180, 185 going up against an army of 3,000 plus. And uh, they held out for as long as they could. Uh, March 6th, March 6th, 1836, Santa Ana storms the Alamo completely and uh, it finally falls. Um, not be Sam Houston and Sam Houston's army came, came up and overpowered the Mexican army and won the independence for for texas so people believe that this is actually representing and helping that campaign the revolution war the texas revolution war which is you guys enjoyed that history lesson um i i think i got a lot of the information out well um as far as value on something like this um only places i could find any kind of history on it is in museums um so I know there's some historical significance to a piece like this. Um, what that means for a reseller, that's 
where it gets interesting, what's a person willing to pay? So, you know, what a buyer would be willing to pay to own a piece of history like this. And uh, after he hooked up with Hancock and they started, they, they formed that company, it actually started saying that their uh, engravings and stuff started changing up, obviously. So, yeah, um, if you find stuff like that, if you're a reseller and you find stuff like that, uh, it'll be it'll be hard for you to find a, a way to price it. Uh, really can't give too much advice because I haven't figured out a way to do it myself. I know I've seen some of the um, later stuff, the 19th century stuff, early 19th century, and after the the company, because um, they say that they there's a there's a few years in between like uh, 1857 to 1870 where his work was really was uh, at its best. I guess is, is the way to put it. Um, and some of that stuff, there are, there are prices on some of his other other works. Uh, once he's with the other company, you know, some of that stuff for plates, you know, they still sell well over $100. Um, so keep an eye out for this kind of stuff. If it's a few bucks, you know, what's you know, when you have it to spare to put it to the side and, and find out the history, especially, you know, I mean, I'm from Texas. The name is Southern Texas Picker. I mean, it's pretty cool. I have a piece of history. It's made in England, but it's made for Texas. It's kind of an odd, kind of an odd historical item. And then if you do the year, I mean, it, it's it's going to be two centuries and a couple more decades. For now, I can say it's a century and a half for sure. Easily. I was able to go to a flea market, uh, check your local areas, depending on where you're at. I don't know how your winners are, depending on your state and whatnot, but... Uh, there's still always places to source, uh, you know, if you're waiting for the yard sales and the garage sales from Friday to Sunday, those are, those are always going to be my favorites to go to. You, you never know what you're going to find at those places, but there are flea markets that open up, um, during the weekdays, um, that I have around my area. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that you guys have that around your area. If you're, if you're trying to do this, uh, there's always thrift stores that are opened, um, weekly weekday, um, there's a bunch of, of sources that you can go check out your local area and see what you can find that you can flip on. So for me, it was that flea market, that enclosed one. Even though it was raining, I was still able to, after it piqued my interest and I, and I took it with me, um, I looked up comps on it. And the one that just recently sold, sold for a little over over 150 bucks. So we'll see. It's it's an um, independence book. It's a pretty cool historical book has a lot of cool pictures in it um i'm sure somebody out there would is definitely going to appreciate this um like i said the comps on this uh, we're going for about a, a bill 50 so 150 bucks for it i i don't know if somebody's going to pay that much for it but if they do end up buying it for anywhere near that price i great day of sourcing great day of picking sourcing whatever you want to call it it was a great day of that um, at another place, I ended up picking up just a couple of things. Everybody's familiar with Hot Wheel cars. Um, after checking out comps, somebody sold four of these Bugattis, four identical Bugattis. Uh, they were able to sell them for a little over 20 bucks, which they're from the same, if you notice, they're from the same series. Okay. Um, I'm thinking I might be able to do the same thing. So I'll four of them for 20 bucks plus the shipping we'll find out and then at that same place i pulled these bob ross puzzles they're really cool i got five of them um they're all different pictures really cool puzzles so comps on those Somebody had just recently sold all five of those that are the variety, the, the five different ones that you can get uh, for a little over 28 plus shipping. So I'm hoping I can do the same thing. Um, there's also lots of these being sold by the three for a little bit over 16. I don't remember if shipping was included or not. Um, if you guys are interested in the videos of where I actually make the sales um, and find out what these actually sell for when I do this kind of sourcing, uh, please Feel free to leave a comment down below. I'm, I'm always open to to uh, suggestions, especially if people want to see that kind of stuff. Um, I'll be like I said, I'll be working on the videos for the actual yard sales, state sales, garage sales, all that good stuff. Um, if if you haven't already, 
be sure to hit that like button, the subscribe button. I know you want to. Hope you guys enjoyed. YouTube, I'm out. It's your Southern Texas pick.